Okay. Yo, hey, it's people. Hey, guys. How is it going? Welcome yeah, to our we... latest session. And uh, today we are sharing some uh, great information uh, or insights about six leading cloud providers in 2022. Sasha, you can take over the stage. Yeah, then I do that. Um... Generally, generally, um, when starting to use cloud platforms, the, the biggest issue is basically to get a clear overview and basically see if, which service you want to use and which provider you uh, want to put your data to and what, what they have in their portfolio and uh, how they, which, which markets they target especially. And also to see as it's a future decision um, that you get an overview of the market share and how they um, how their strategy may be um, directed in future. So basically, why cloud? Quite simple. If your cloud product is software, you may not want to uh, handle or maintain infrastructure and operating service services like all the time, and get that off your shoulders. Basically, to a cloud provider, and you also have scalability and stuff like that. I mean. That is knowable. I mean, we are right now at the point to decide which cloud provider and not why or whatever these decisions have happened. So we chose to take the biggest markets, market competi competitors, the six biggest actually. And um, yeah, let us directly dive in and start up. Um, so would you share three. my screen? Sure. Yeah. So... Right now, we are starting with Alibaba. Actually, they are on the Chinese market mostly, or the biggest chunk of them. But let's first dive a bit into, um, into basic data about, it, about them. They were basically founded, so the cloud uh, service of them was launched in 2009. And yeah, since then, they have had a huge grip and mostly concentrate on like elastic computing and application servers. You basically have a simple overview over their core um, yeah, pillars, I would say, like data, the database storage, security, and uh, stuff. And here you get an overview about all the products, the basic list, and here you can choose different um, topics you want to tackle. If you want a dedicated host, for example, which basically, yeah, in a, in a cloud environment, you would basically like to be more scalable, uh, but also application server are still reasonable to use for to some extent. And yeah, as you can see, you have different categories and you can just choose by them and then just choose services you want. If you, for example, need a supercomputer cluster, you can just go into and get an overview over the several services they are they're offering and then book it in. I actually don't have an account right now, but uh, that's not as deep as you want to go. Um, one of the uh, customers are basically, um, let me really fast open up the link. The biggest customers being Panasonic and uh, for example, Salesforce are also hosting there. Um, basically, this is, uh, is true for all of the cloud uh, providers. They have company listings, and um, I would be, yeah, not take it for social. I mean, if some company has just a little service hosted, um, for example, a front end, just to be better reachable in some areas where their uh, strengths are now, like in China, for example, then they will list them up, which is basically happening. But as we see, for example, WeWork is also using um, Alibaba. These, this isn't a complete list. There are just a few companies to get a short overview. But uh, as I said, Ford is also hosting KPMG, Air Asia, Schneider Electric, HP, and Casio. I, I guess these are somewhat big competitors, which are or customers for Alibaba, actually. Um, the market share in uh, the quarter one of 2021 is basically 6%. Doesn't sound like a lot, but um, if we now take a look into, the, um, into their 
um, sorry, into the data centers around the world. It kind of makes sense. I think I didn't found the shares, but I think, and I would say that for true, that their biggest market is China, actually. I mean, if we have a look here, it's basically uh, uh, 12 inside the main, 12, company, uh, 12 data centers in the mainland of China, which you can see here on the bottom part in orange. I don't know what's it blinking. Oh, yeah. Uh, like on the bottom, you see the different um, locations they got. And <clears throat> outside of the mainland, they have like 15 others. And it's uh, Asia Pacific, EU Central, additionally UK. I think this is more about uh, Britain exiting from uh, European Union. Basically, I would say that or other reasons. And you always see the availability zones, zones and when they released it on the bottom area. And there's also one uh, additionally in Hong Kong, because mostly it's not mainland China if it's Hong Kong. But you can see also Middle East is covered. Um, yeah, and these are the different zones. Only two servers actually in, in the US actually, which is not a lot uh, therefore, but then you see on which market they are concentrating. And in the Asian uh, area, they are the biggest competitor actually with the biggest market share. I would uh, challenge that fact. Um, yeah, here you have an overview of the different services which are available in different areas. As you can see, for example, Cloud uh, Monitor or Alibaba Mail is not available in Thailand, for example. But yeah, you can just uh, get your country um, up the list and see if all services are hosted in your area or usable in your availability zone you want to use. Um, yeah, on the next... Uh, step. We will have a short look just for the for the taste, I say, on the Alibaba GitHub page because mostly you can see how much they are sharing with the community and which projects they are um, making open source or document in a in a known manner by developers. So here we have like 442 repositories and 153 members basically. So that's kind of in the middle, but for 6% market share, it's actually a lot. We will see later that there are way bigger repos uh, from other competitors. But let me stop here and hand over to Lucas right now. He will help, out, help us out with the next provider. Uh, yeah, thank you, Sasha. And uh, yeah, and the next provider is IBM. And uh, yeah, let's have a quick look uh, where is their offering coming from. So before IBM had their own cloud services, uh, there was a company called SoftLayer that started in 2005 uh, providing cloud services. And it was actually acquired by IBM in 2013. And that's where IBM also started their cloud journey. Um, if we see here on my screen, the catalog, you can see many of their services are more uh, targeted to specific use cases. I think that's uh, where IBM has their strength in. So you will find many services here, of course, that you uh, would find uh, within the offerings of other famous or big cloud providers. But uh, many of them are actually just cloud hosts, hosted IBM software products. Um, there are dozens of them, um, so using that page, you can uh, figure out if uh, these services match your requirements and your uh, individual project. And um, coming to the customers uh, that they uh, serve so far, uh, there are customers like American Airlines, uh, Bitly, Allianz, ExxonMobil, and a few more. Um, and uh, that's not so surprising uh, because they have a market share uh, in Q1 2021, that's what we figured out, of 5%. So similar to Alibaba, it's more uh, a, a small bit of the market that they serve. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it could be an option for uh, your um, yeah, project. So definitely worth to check out their offering. And they have, uh, regarding their uh, availability, um, 
uh, data centers in nearly all continents. You can see here Africa is missing, um, but they are represented in uh, Europe and in South America, North America, and yeah, uh, yeah, Asia Pacific, I would say. You can see here Australia and uh, Japan. And partly China is, no, this is South Korea, I guess, yeah. So they are not represented in China, which is uh, yeah, a good point to know uh, if you uh, have a specific requirement where you need to serve that market as well. And coming to the, yeah, the, as you said, Sasha, to the part where we have a look on the developer friendly list, um, they are of course also having a GitHub repo that is, uh, or a GitHub team uh, that is public. Um, they're sharing some source codes. Uh, maybe you have heard about Watson, so you will find some libraries to uh, integrate their Watson services. They are also known for some AI solutions uh, that uh, are also that can be found here on on their uh, open source list. At least their integration libraries. And having a look at the people, I mean, not that many. I think yeah, these are thirteen. Uh, Compared to Alibaba, what we saw a moment ago, that's not that big. Nevertheless, 407 repositories uh, is already a, a good chunk for IBM. And yeah, that's it about IBM. I'm yeah reaching my virtual mic to Sasha again, who's going to share number five, four. <laughs> Oh, already, <clears throat> already that fast, okay? We are heading. Um, yeah, the next on our uh, general list um, is basically Oracle. Um, they host launched their cloud service, funny enough, relatively late in 2016. So they basically arrived really, really late to the party, as you will see later, um, which is a little bit uh, weird about Oracle because they are mainly in the space of uh, hosting databases and especially for uh, big big companies like um, ERP systems and uh, things like that. So though they so they are really focused on big company corporations and concrete industries. But we'll dive into that in a bit. So set as so uh, founded in two thousand sixteen. Let's have a um, short overview of their, um, where are my links gone? It's crazy. My links flew away. I opened them. Give me a second. I will just uh, hit up the cloud products, hopefully. Um, oh, no, I didn't open it up that list. But, um, ah, sorry, I did. So this is basically an overview of their basic stack or the infrastructure. And they have like a configurator here, I guess. I didn't try it out, but yeah, you can just uh, add some services for development, for example, like a gateway, API management and uh, stuff like that. And even you, you can even choose which um, uh, platform you want to use. Uh, for low code, they have Apex. We didn't look into that, but this is not the topic of our service. And here you can go further, yeah. Basically, Kubernetes and serverless possibilities, which makes kind of sense due to the trend. And yeah, you have the different uh, stacks, and you can already see analytics and BI. You have the BI and analytics platform of Oracle, which was, I think, mainly a, a huge product uh, of them. And also having Oracle DB and uh, Java acquired years ago. Uh, but don't let's talk about that. It's a huge pain point, actually. But uh, back to that, a uh, huge customer of, of them is actually the Deutsche Bank, FedEx, uh, Vodafone, and as you can see, even Zoom or Red Bull Racing. I really don't know uh, about the corporation Oracle Red Bull Racing, but Red Bull Racing is with them actually. And uh, Samsung and Dropbox are also using services. But as said previously, <clears throat> most of the time, um, the Companies have just uh, hosted services in some areas or just use them as they 
uh, use only parts of the services. Mostly they are spread all over the place um, regarding the different cloud providers. That is mostly true, I guess. Um, so let's head to the areas. Um, I so far didn't find a, didn't search for a direct overview, I need to say. I don't want to say I didn't find it, but I don't have the list actually. I'm sorry for that. But I will just tell you the um, most, the, the biggest zones they have. It's North, North America, basically, Europe, um, Middle East, Africa, even though, Latin America, and Asia Pacific. So they uh, cover like basically all the area. Mm, better, it would be a little bit better to have a card right now and to just see, for example, if they are hosted in China. Because if you if you want your services to be in China, it's as said before, totally a point to use partially Alibaba actually. But uh, we'll see in a bit when we show the other services. Um, <clears throat> what I found as a little down point is that they, I I had the um, basic um, impression that they mostly focus on the on certain industries or industry wise and have like industry solutions partially uh, stuck together. I mean, if you go on, uh, so if you just steer to solutions then you have like choosing by scenario, for example, and then you get like fully stuck together uh, packages, which you can just use, or you even can, as I said before, go into a certain <clears throat> industry and then, then just look up for, ready-made and stuck together um, things that are mostly used in those industries. For example, connection to different financial providers like um, banks and credit institutions or so, if they have implemented that by, by then. Um, yeah, that, that basically about Oracle so far. Um, and with that, I will switch over to Lucas and let's see what he got for us. Thank you, Sasha. Uh, yeah, now it's getting uh, more, uh, not more interesting, but uh, uh, let's say we are entering the territory of the big three cloud providers, and we're going to start with Google Cloud. So Google Cloud uh, is more known, I guess, uh, among you folks uh, as an yeah, option that you can use to build anything in the cloud space. Um, they have similar to the other big two ones that we are going to uh, yeah, uh, share with you. Uh, nearly every service you can imagine that you might need for your product or project. Um, from computing to authentication providers for big data applications, um, uh, cloud hosting uh, functions. Uh, so you can find everything actually you might want to do in on the cloud. And um, I think if you need to jump into this uh, product overview or service overview of them, uh, you can use that page. Uh, they have a pretty nice uh, documentation and uh, yeah, overview about what each service is providing to you. Um, so for example, if we check out the compute engine, you can see uh, here easily what is in for you, um, which different uh, compute instance sizes are available. Uh, it goes from small, uh, let's say compute instances that you might need for a small hobby project up to huge instances with a lot of memory or CPU power, even uh, some instances are really uh, useful for uh, workloads where you need to, for example, do some calculations for graphics rendering or maybe for uh, machine learning uh, using some special graphic cards. So that's the place where you can figure out um, if Google Cloud is interesting for you. They started their services in 2008. So they're one of the early birds, I would say. And uh, yeah, among their famous customers, uh, there are companies like Activision, Blizzard, Lufthansa, SpaceX, even Twitter. 
um, also Deutsche Bank here. So uh, as Sasha mentioned a moment ago, uh, Deutsche Bank is uh, using Oracle Cloud, but they also do it with GCP, so Google Cloud Platform. And this might be an indicator that uh, bigger enterprises usually have a multi-cloud strategy, which makes sense, of course. You don't want to put all eggs into one basket. Um, their market share is, uh, let's say, higher than the market shares we shared for the other three providers we mentioned before. They have a market share in 2021 Q1 of 9% approximately. And regarding their um, data center availabilities or regions that they support, uh, you would find that uh, they're represented in Americas, so North, South America, Europe, Asia Pacific, but interest, interestingly, uh, not in Africa. And um, so if this is a criteria for you, uh, you should definitely consider it. Um, I mean, keep, keep in mind, uh, Africa is a huge growing market and I guess they will soon also provide uh, services directly on the African continent. But uh, that's a topic for maybe another episode. Uh, last but not least, uh, let's have a look on their GitHub repo. So um, as you can see, they have 391 people in their organization and uh, uh, yeah, more repositories than the providers we showed you before, around 1K. Uh, pretty active, of course. Google is a huge um, company doing a lot of things for the open source world and sharing back uh, yeah, a lot of uh, code to the community. And yeah, I would say regarding Google Cloud Computing, it is a really interesting solution, especially if maybe one of the others is uh, not an option for you. Could have, of course, many reasons. It depends on your requirements. But choosing Google Cloud uh, is definitely, uh, uh, let's say, for most of the cases, a sure shot. Uh, the pricing is not different to, uh, for example, AWS or Azure. And yeah, I heard people saying they really like their um, management console of Google Cloud. So the user experience as a DevOps or as a software engineer to use their services. Uh, I think this depends, of course, on your taste. But uh, yeah, have a look on it. And... Uh, yeah, share us in the comments if uh, what you think maybe about that point. And I would give back my voice now to Sasha, who is going to give you an intro and overview about the number two in the market of leading cloud providers. Uh, Sasha, you're muted, I guess. Yeah, sorry, I'm muted. Yeah, back again. Yeah, and the next being Amazon Web Services, which obviously is from Amazon. It was uh, found in 2000 or launched in 2006. Um, we basically forgot to mention that um, especially for Google, it's known for AVS, it's known. And for Azure, partially true that um, they hosted their services. Um, out of the already out of the fact that they already existed, they were making uh, public. They, they were publishing more and more their own services, which is true for Google too. Um, and they hosted it and offered it uh, for the customers basically. And then they started to build together different services um, and hosted their several cloud plat platforms. That's especially the reason why the um, market leaders actually have kind of a core time where they started to host all their services actually because it's 2006 two years later google launched their public platform but yeah we know it from before was with with big data and big query or big table and and this stuff they were publishing but not in as google cloud um uh, pro cloud provider right mm -hmm. google cloud google cloud platform Platform, sorry, I always forget how what GCP is meaning all the time. Um, 
Yeah, that a bit to the history because it's super interesting. Um, but let me get to that point a little bit later. Let's first have an overview about the several products. You see, you can also cluster the different categories, which are basically the same as always. But if we uh, now take a deeper dive into it, we have stuff like, like a no-code platform with, <clears throat> with AppFlow. And then there's also AP gateways and known stuff like Alexa, for example. Um, and all the products actually Amazon is hosting. I think if we take a look into storage or database, there will be the more better known like uh, Amazon Elastic or DocumentDB or DynamoDB. Um, which are, I guess, one of the more favorite services. But here you have also Amazon key spaces uh, based on Cassandra and Redis or VMware, even though. So most of the services are also using like the well-known products. Like, for example, Amazon RDS is nothing more as a, as a service for um, databases where you can then host, as you see, MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle, um, and MariaDB. So basically, um, the well-known servers you also may have in your actual um, application stack and just want to move on to instead of using, for example, Dynamo, D Dynamo or Document. Uh, and yeah, that's about the services. And here we get to the more techie-like um, customers, I would say. Mm, very interesting. They have actually Netflix as one of the most known uh, providers in the customer market uh, for, for us as customers. I think everybody knows Netflix. They also host like Twitch and Twitter and BBC, Bayer, Goldman Sachs, AstraZeneca, just for the lulz right now, uh, Honda, Discover, HSBC and Fujitsu Siemens or Fujitsu, um, which are all really, really big and well-known um, companies. I mean, this, this is a huge pipeline. But you can also get a complete overview here. I mean, if you are, for example, in the in in the J Japanese room, you can just say, okay, I want to see which um, customers I have over there, just to see, um, yeah, if they have the big competitors. And this is also a very good indicator if if you may want to use AWS, for example. Um, so now. Another point is, yeah, in which uh, markets, markets are they operating? As, as we can also see on the site already, it's um, America especially. So I think it, I, I think USA is meant because they don't, uh, there's Latin America, so they don't say North or South, they say America and then, or American companies and then Latin America, J Japan, Europe, Middle East and Africa, uh, greater China and Asia Pacific. So we see now that they also are in the Chinese market. Um, I mean, in the end, we will have a short discussion maybe about that. Um, yeah, but here's also a category global, which is kind of interesting, which should mean that they are hosting their services globally and not only concentrated, like for example, Goldman Sachs seems to uh, offer services to the whole world, for example. And it may be possible that some companies here, like Gameloft, for example, uses uh, um, Amazon just to hit the Chinese market and not to be bound to Alibaba, for example. But yeah, we may come to that um, comparisons a little bit uh, later. Um, the market share is really huge with 30, 32%. I mean, this is uh, really a big market share. And um, let's at least uh, in the end have a short look on the repositories. This is only Amazon Web Services and they have hosted like 340 repos repositories. Also the CLI is opened there, the CDK. So the Cloud Development Kit is uh, published there. And yeah, you have also a toolkit for VS Code. I think a very, very um, popular Let's call it IDE. If you buff it up in enough, it's actually an IDE. So no point. See, I'm using it too. So no, no hate there. Um, and they have like 194 members in their um, company. <clears throat> um, another interesting point, I think most of the people who are a bit into cloud services and the point and, and the, all the topics, um, Amazon actually hosts their own, I mean, most of the providers do that, 
host their own services in AWS. But, uh, AWS. but the funny part is that they actually are real customers. So Amazon, their web store, is a customer of AWS and hosts their products there. And they are have the same uh, um, priority as Netflix, for example. So I found that fact very, very funny. I mean, you can see it in their balance sheets and stuff that they are just a customer of their own. I, I find it kind of interesting. And this is also an indicator that Amazon really trusts in their own capabilities and have um, the basic idea, idea to not shut it and shut it down and really see the future in their system, which is a super important point to view. If you put like your whole application into one service, which will, I mean, if you are small and just starting up, totally a thing to do, but because you can't maintain your services in different um, uh, cloud providers, it's it would be super hard to, to maintain actually. So you will bet on one horse and then you want to be sure that you have a good horse that you bet on actually. So that on that side to AWS and now let's go to the last one. But yeah. Okay. Lucas, your time. Then let's uh, jump on the uh, last cloud provider we wanted to share here with you guys. And it is basically Microsoft Azure. Um, Azure was a bit late uh, in on like in this uh, yeah who's going to lead the cloud world provider race so we said uh, gcp was launched uh, has been launched in 2008 uh, aws was one of the early birds in 2006 um, and asia came in 2010 and um, in the meantime on the last years uh, asia gained a lot of traction um, of course because uh, since uh, their CEO uh, in the middle of the 2010 to 2020 uh, decade decided to emphasize or highlight uh, the strategy moving every service to the cloud. Um, Microsoft decided, of course, that they need to catch up, especially with uh, AWS. So you will find here on their uh, product catalog actually everything you might desire for your cloud strategy, um, I guess, or not I guess, uh, as far as I know, there is nearly nothing you can't find as an equivalent to AWS services or to Google Cloud computing platform. Um, so basically you, will, uh, you can check out here all the services. They are organized on this uh, product catalog as well in categories. So something really common, like with the others, uh, the, their compute services. And uh, it depends, of course, on, on what you want. Do you want to have own infrastructure? So they have infrastructure as a service uh, offerings um, where you can deploy virtual mach machines, basically. Um, these virtual machines, of course, have different, uh, uh, let's say, sizings. So I think here in the pricing page, uh, there is a good way to, uh, to check out what is possible. Um, yeah, they have a nice uh, walkthrough. So if you need to know what is possible or what is uh, fitting to your project, I recommend you to have a look here. Um, but not only infrastructure as a service, you will find products that are uh, considered in the category of platform as a service. So basically, uh, for example, you have um, Azure Kubernetes services where you can deploy with one click, basically, a whole Kubernetes cluster. Uh, if you deploy this um, in the background, there will be uh, a deployment triggered to create computing machines, so Azure virtual machines. And they have some kind of deployment scripts that will set up all the infrastructure coming from a load balancer, going to the computing instances, setting up network rules and uh, VNets for you, everything with one click. And uh, for, of course, they have uh, also solutions that go to the software as a service part uh, where you can, for example, uh, deploy uh, an SAP uh, installation directly to the cloud if you want to skip all the infrastructure part. 
Um, yeah, if you have uh, some um, specific needs uh, for your project, I recommend it, like we recommend for the other providers to have a look on this catalog. Um, all the offerings are well documented and you will find um, everything you need easily just using their online documentation. Um, among their big clients, um, they have a pretty nice customer stories page, uh, similar to what we saw with AWS and uh, Google Cloud Platform. Some famous names here are, for example, AT&T, Coca-Cola, Walmart, eBay, Samsung, Boeing, or BMW. Um, this is recent probably because, um, I mean, Microsoft was already having a business relationship with all of their clients. Most of their clients use already Windows due to historical reasons. And at the end, business is all about people. So when the sales agent of Microsoft already knows the responsible uh, uh, lead or manager within the uh, enterprise, um, it is really uh, obvious that you will at some point offer them to migrate to the cloud. So cloud computing as a strategy followed by many companies is nowadays uh, a must for many uh, business models. And therefore uh, here, Azure has a competitive advantage, even though they were a bit late, uh, they can benefit or they benefit from their existing relationships with their clients. Um, so far, they made it to 20% market share. So they are uh, having a bigger chunk of the market than Google, uh, but a smaller one than Amazon. There are some uh, predictions that Azure will also overpass AWS, uh, but we will see what the future will bring here. Uh, definitely maybe a good topic for a new episode and um, coming to our availability of their services. So they have here a page um, dedicated just for their um, geographies that they cover. And similar to AWS, they're represented on every continent. So here is a drop down where you can find um, the countries where you will be able to deploy uh, Azure services. And uh, you will find from Africa, this is South Africa actually, uh, to Asia Pacific, Australia, uh, Southeast Asia, India, Middle East and Europe. Um, yeah, everything that you desire. Also Middle East is represented. Um, so a good choice uh, if you have maybe the need to deploy in a region that is not really covered by the others. So um, yeah, definitely worth to check out. And last but not least, their uh, GitHub repository. Among all the others we checked out before, they have, uh, they seem to have the highest activity here. So 2,000 people in the organization. Um, as you might know, um, Microsoft purchased GitHub and they also committed themselves to uh, heavily invest in open source. So a lot of their component services or tools are available here on GitHub. Um, they offer, well, great uh, support in this, uh, yeah, in all the things around the services and products that, are open, that have been open source. Even the documentation is hosted here on GitHub. So if you have a request for improvement, uh, you can just do it straight out of GitHub. And yeah, I would say that's it about Asia. I think Sasha, we can now have the open wrap up and uh, yeah. What is your favorite? I think you're muted. Yeah, sorry for that. My keyboard is actually a bit loud and so I just muted myself when uh, when you were talking because I realized that my mic is getting the tone into your uh, voice and this is not so nice for no one. Um, yeah, I would say let's discuss a bit and then in the end give up uh, our predictions and what we think. But uh, yeah, I, I would say we, we kind of wrap it up a bit like together. 
I have made a uh, shot sheet, which is uh, like a little bit um, putting some uh, facts together. And we should basically have a discussion and tier it. Uh, so make a little tier list where we rank, uh, where we rank each of us ranks the stuff while discussing basically. Because I have, I think I have small uh, adjust, adjustments to make. I think just giving a little bit uh, stuff up here, we have the same number one, actually, but for different reasons. But um, I would say if you would share my screen, mm -hmm. um, I would... Maybe, I, maybe we should directly come up also with a little disclaimer that... Uh, at the end, of course, you need to look at your own requirements. Um, yes. So we try to boil it down in more generic points, but uh, this is not a final state, or these are not final statements um, because there are so many moving parts in the decision whether you choose, let's say, AWS, mm -hmm. Azure, or Alibaba, for, let's say, um, that this is more like an inspiration for you guys to. Uh, understand, okay, what are maybe some key differentiators and what uh, maybe should be considered before moving or deciding for a specific one. Yeah, it's basically to show you a bit how you can get around on the page and where you find the interesting information. I think location is super interesting. Yeah, with all in, share actually, and maybe also in which industry or in which areas the different, if, if so given the each provider performs best or seems to perform. So we try to make it as objective as possible, but right now we will just discuss and there will be some subjective things coming up, but we try to reason it out that you can just ask yourself some questions and say, do I have that requirement? And basically tell, tell if you if it's important for you, the points we are making, uh, we are now carving out and yeah, um, that's that on, on the right side, I've listed up the shares actually, and then just, just the incarnation years, just to have some general border cornerstones. Uh, yeah, on the left, you see the different things we, uh, we showed you before, and uh, it's the same order as we presented. Um, we will provide the links in the description later, um, the different ones. And yeah, I mean, I have an opinion about Alibaba actually. I wouldn't, uh, I would only use it if I really need to have uh, good traction in China. But one of the core strengths actually, or with which, 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 with which they are bragging is uh, security. They have like uh, thousands of attacks, uh, like uh, DDoS attacks they are uh, uh, preventing actually every, every day. It's a huge amount. I can't relate it because I didn't see any uh, statistics from the other ones, but it sounded huge to me, like a lot. And mm -hmm. that is kind of a point they are writing on their own flag. But yeah, as you know, it's a company and they talk about security. It's, I mean, they are just making some uh, advertisement, ad advertisements for them. Yeah, that's, that's the point. I mean, I found it on their page, so it's not very objective actually. But I would put it for my taste in the last spot, actually, because they have uh, such a small uh, area covered, basically, or very much in China. And they have a close time into China, which I wouldn't really prefer, actually. And I think if the Americans or the American hosters or the government, even though, will get harder on the regressions to China. It may be really hard to host core services if you have them hosted in Alibaba um, that you will provide them in the USA still and they won't cut you off, you know, because the government, for example, is uh, uh, asking uh, TikTok or Google and Apple to unlist TikTok from their list as they have uh, huge concerns about uh, data espionage of their customers. Right now, this is in discussion and yeah, for me, that is kind of a little no-go if I don't want to enter the Chinese market. So what's your thought about it? Uh, yeah, I think there were already really good points. 
Um, so nothing to disagree with. Uh, from my perspective, um, I think, yeah, if, if you try to move to the Chinese market, this could be a good option uh, since they are, let's say, the experts or the local experts uh, providing cloud computing or cloud services in, in China. Um, as you saw, the dev community is not that big, so I think it's a more closed ecosystem still. Uh, documentation is mostly available in Chinese, even though there are translations, of course, oh. but uh, if you are a Chinese speaker, this could be a plus. And yeah, a pricing, <laughs> from the pricing perspective, they're relatively cheap, so if this is a point and um, yeah, depending on what you're going to host in terms of data, <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, let's, uh, I'm, I'm always advocating for peace, but if uh, there are some conflicts on the global stage with, with the Western governments and China and uh, who knows if your services uh, suddenly get some um, uh, yeah, interruptions or if, if you need to stop uh, working together with Chinese companies. Since this is not a uh, problem yet, I would say I would try it if I have something, uh, say, to host in China. Um, maybe you can just use the part of the services. Uh, I've seen, for example, some companies just using uh, Alibaba CDNs to, to just speed up content delivery in China. Um, so it doesn't mean that you need to host your core services there, but maybe a part of the, you could use a part of the services for specific uh, goals you might have in, in, in your uh, project or for your software. Um, yeah, and I would also personally, like if I would choose it for a hobby project, uh, put it on the last uh, uh, point. I have currently no direct interactions with uh, the Chinese market and uh, the, the others have pretty much similar offerings and uh, some of the others even have more documentation and more community support. So I would place it also to number six. Yeah, thanks for the input. I actually didn't uh, have a look on the documentation and stuff. That is quite in interesting. As uh, For me, it wasn't clear that a lot of stuff may be in Chinese and yeah, we as non-Chinese readers or speakers can't really uh, do anything with it, actually. That would be also kind of a small problem, I guess. But yeah, um, very interesting point. Um, the next two are really hard for me, actually. I don't know how you feel about it. Let's um, have a try. I don't... Yeah, I would actually only go on the, on the actual share. And this would be my point uh, a point to make. Let me have a short look back again. Um, because I found that um, yeah, as I said, I have the feeling and this is uh, not really um, uh, uh, analyzed very well from my side, but as you can see, they are really cutting it off in these packages like industries and they say, hey, if you want to host certain products, we have like uh, put together stuff, for example, for automotive bran uh, branches or financial services or industrial manufacturing. And they offer you like pre-made packages on their cloud services and stuff. And uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure if it would be interesting for me as I'm more in the small business area. And if Oracle there would be the best partner to go with, if it's, if not, if I want a more major one like Oracle or IBM, I mean, these are big companies. They are super um, long timers in the area of hosting and having data centers and stuff. So they would be really, really, um, yeah, major partner, partners actually, especially in the area of servers and their product uh, pipeline. But I would then prefer IBM as they are basically from the hosting area and building up data centers. I mean, IBM... I mean, they are called uh, international business computers or whatsoever, but they are all about hosting and servers. And I think they have a more major pipeline. And as I saw, the products were more like, um, yeah, PostgreSQL and the standard stuff, you know, in the whole portfolio. So 
for me it looked more interesting but it's only from that standpoint so there is the, i would have to have a really closer look into that so i would actually put um oracle on the uh, four and then uh other way around sorry oracle on the five and ibm on the four for me because yeah points i said what do you think uh, yeah, I would just go with the market share as well. Um, I don't have that much knowledge about uh, the cloud offering uh, for both of them, actually. What I know is that uh, IBM and uh, Oracle mainly have their cloud um, environments to serve specific customers that already use their products. So, for example, if you want to uh, use IBM mainframes, or you have been using IBM mainframes in, in your corporation, and uh, you ask IBM, they offer the service to host it in their data centers. So wow. if you want to reduce maybe cost there, uh, that could be interesting. And same for Oracle, as you said already, Sasha, like if there are some uh, solutions from Oracle that are, that common people mostly don't know about, but they're everywhere. Uh, if you look into the corporate landscape, like uh, Oracle databases, but uh, especially their enterprise resource planning technology is uh, uh, widespread, especially in the Americas. And they offer basically, um, I mean, IBM and Oracle offer these cloud environments to host their services. And if you are a user of one of the services, uh, this could be interesting for you. Um, what I found also in our research before, or quick research, I would say, is they uh, often promote multi-cloud strategies. So I would say, or I guess that uh, both providers are uh, aware about their little market share and they are um, promoting multi-cloud strategies uh, since they have a fair reason to go to a big company that maybe mainly goes to Azure or AWS or Google Cloud Platform and says, okay, but uh, let's host our ERP uh, on our uh, cloud platform. So you as a company maybe uh, split the risk. Uh, you don't depend on one big one. And maybe for such a scenario, I would say it could be interesting, but uh, I would say, uh, uh, number yeah four to IBM since they have a bigger market share and Oracle is number five. <clears throat> okay, then we are coming to the next one. I mean, uh, you have shown an interesting point actually. Let me open it up again. Um, let me really quick search for the link. But um, what I basically want to say, I mean, it's Google right now. It's really hard to discuss at that point, which of the next three ones is uh, nice to use. But honestly, um, as every platform is, uh, is managed over the UI and stuff, and... Um, I found Google to be a bit, same goes for Amazon, a bit overloaded. But to be honest, I only worked a little, little bit with it. But I've had my problems to just get started with Google, actually. But it was like five or six years ago or, or even more in 2015 or so. Um, and that is basically my only point, because right now we are talking, <coughs> sorry, um, of, of Google, they have like a big bunch of services hosted. And um, I, I mean, you get the basic stuff like Kubernetes, so containering, you have uh, the Google engine for serverless functions and different databases, um, scenarios for big data. And, and, and we can go on that un limitless, I guess. Um, and I mean, it's Google, they're hosting their, their own stuff in their data centers. They are still building data centers. Um, but even though they have a super small share, this must have a huge reason. I don't see it basically, but I think the, that companies 
tend not to share their own share with Google because if you're hosting there, you would give parts of your earnings to Google and they don't want that to happen maybe. Um, same goes for Amazon. Actually, if you're hosting shops and stores, you won't host on Amazon because it's a competit competitor. And um, Amazon now starting to enter the VOD, so video on demand market or, uh, or, or audiobook market and stuff not entering freshly, but like years ago, but having shares in that. And I think now even those getting into gaming with Twi Twitch is actually, Amazon actually bought Twitch, I forgot that. Um, so years ago, but um, entering the gaming industry and trying to host, there will not be a point for uh, companies like, like Activision, Blizzard, whatsoever, call them CD Project Red, whatsoever. Um, but yeah, they are delimiting, uh, they are limiting the market more and more by entering other markets. Just one idea of me. So finally, I would still come to the conclusion that I would go just because of my uh, very subjective um, experiences I got with Google would put them actually on, on three in my opinion. So I would totally go with the share, share here. I mean, we, we are talking of hosting like freshly startup situation applications. For that, I would go, I, I would have a deeper look into, but I think I won't go with Google actually for different reasons. So okay. what's your view? Um, yeah, I mean, there are some reasons. I, it's really hard. I mean, it's impossible for me to give a fixed statement. But uh, if I now assume I want to build really quick, uh, maybe an MVP, then I made really great. I mean, depending on how complex is your project is, I made great experience <laughs> with uh, Firebase. And Firebase is a Google Cloud platform product. So basically with Firebase, you can quickly spin up uh, an own uh, app or web app. It gives you an uh, authentication authorization solution or an identity solution out of the box, which is in my opinion, way more easier and fair from the pricing than what AWS or Asia offers. Um, so if, it is, if that's the case, I would... Uh, I would even say, num I mean, for a hobby project, I would maybe even choose it as the preferred option. Like, if you really build something quickly and uh, you don't want to deal with uh, own deployments and uh, services, or maybe you even use solutions that are um, hosted completely by the others, I haven't found anything so simple as Firebase, to be honest. So in that case, I would say, number one, uh, if you go or look from the perspective, okay, you're a company and you want to go into the cloud, you want to have uh, a cloud partner that has substantial uh, market share, because if they have a great good market share, it means they can invest more money into their cloud platform and the more money is being invested, the better the services become. So yeah, I would also go with number three, I think. Um, but at the end, it depends on <coughs> you, uh, some points. I really like your points that you mentioned, for example, if you create the next search engine, maybe you don't want to create it on Google Cloud. Uh, if you create an e-commerce platform, maybe you don't want to host it on AWS, but then on Google Cloud maybe, or Azure. So from the holistic view, I would also put it on number three with the reason now that the market share is just also the number three. I, I, for me, the market share has a big impact as a consumer of this service. Yeah. I, I would side there with you. I was really rethinking really if I should put it on two because I forgot that um, Google actually bought in 2014 or so, they bought Firebase. I forgot that completely because Firebase was only there for three or four years or so. 
uh, I think 10 or 11 they were, were uh, founded. And then they, um, uh, Google, when they released the Android stuff, they had really a close time into Firebase, like meaning you had libraries completely um, that you could, can, could get from Google, which were completely easy to use with Firebase. You just needed to put an account, have an API key and stuff. I completely forgot that they acquired Firebase in 2014. And uh, yeah, but you are right. For small projects, it completely makes sense to, if you say I want like a web service or I use like, um, there are a lot of frameworks actually working with Firebase, especially where you just put in the API key uh, and you can go with the flow and just use it out of the box, basically, with nearly zero configuration amount. I'm totally on your side for small projects. I would use that. But I think you get in a limited use case if you are getting bigger, bigger, bigger. I don't yeah, know how that is working out. Yeah, if, uh, I, I've also seen this happening in a project that once it gets a bit more complex, then uh, Firebase is not uh, good enough. I mean, the authentication, I mean, the identity solution is still great most of the cases, but uh, you will get more complications, for example, um, if you need to, if you build a platform where um, your users have their own subdomain, so this is a like use case, for example, for e-commerce platforms or maybe a blogging platform. Um, if you use GCP, it's getting really expensive because you need to, um, I mean, they offer some kind of managed uh, um, gateway service uh, where you could implement that. But I've seen it cost more than 2,000 uh, US dollars per month. Uh, so you would probably say I would like, I prefer that to build my own stuff on GCP, like with Nginx, or not. you could create your own routing gateway, but then you have more manual work to do. And um, yeah, maybe for these use cases, you would better opt to do AWS or Azure. Um, but if it's just for, a, quick MVP. Um, what I've also found interesting is if you have, if, if you need to process huge amounts of data, I found the products uh, really compelling. They have like this um, service where you can create your own dashboards and uh, aggregate data uh, from different uh, uh, sources. It's called a Google Data Studio. Um, if you have maybe something in this direction, you should definitely check out what they do since, I mean, they are famous for processing a lot of uh, data and uh, <coughs> that could be interesting. So if you go with big data use cases or uh, an analytics, uh, GCP could be interesting. But to make this uh, thing a bit, uh, our rating a bit more exciting, I would say, I would give it a two just because of Firebase. <laughs> Okay. And then let's head over to the next two ones. I'm, I mean, what we are actually trying to do is just to kind of getting into a tier list because ba not even a tier list, but into a ranking, which is quite hard. You need to see the use case, but all use cases generally, generally, I would say we want to host a, a real application in a company situation, which is kind of startup, but we tend to want to have more flexibility and stuff. So right with a look on that, we aren't in a in a hobby project situation, more in a business case, I guess. And therefore, you look on the market share and more futuristic points. So I think, okay. yeah. Then let's go with three. Then let's go with three. Because yeah, but, scenario, if it's a professional scenario. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I, I would have also switched to two. But I, I think right now I was watching us mainly on the business side right now. Because if you look on... If you want to make it more spread, we need to have a tier list. And then I, I think GCP and AWS, for me, would land on the same spot, to be honest. Mm. I think because I, yeah, we come to that in a bit. There are, there are reasons for what is happening right now. Um, but yeah, I, I, AWS I only used once, actually. And uh, it was like four, three or four years ago. And I really had a hustle to, um, to get a good overview. Um, but I found that actually for GCP, AWS and Azure too, um, that getting an overview right easily starting up if you are in the fully fledged model like 
completely GCP, not Firebase, where you have like easier um, prepacked solutions. Um, when you go into AVS, you need to host that, 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 that to get that and that run. Basically, yeah, you, you would start an application server, then uh, start a DB, then connect these two. And then to get an overview and stuff, I found it hard then. So back in, in the day, I found it really hard to uh, get everything together because they were always showing you the subscription model, but I wanted to see the technical stuff, like uh, what kind of server do I have? What are the technical details? Because I wasn't that deep into the money point at that time because I just wanted to try it out and was like, yeah, maybe I pay five euros or so, but I won't get it uh, scaled up so aggressively that I will pay like whatsoever. So I just wanted to get it to run, but uh, finally I was just testing GCP. And then I think I switched to Azure actually. So I got through the whole pipeline and was looking what was less frustrating for me. So yeah, AWS lands on spot two. Um, now going away from market share situation, but yeah. That's that's basically that. And I don't want to share with Amazon because everybody does, like Zalando and stuff. No, just kidding. Yeah, I think Zalando is actually using AWS as far as I know. So and at least they're used. <clears throat> so like I think five, four or five years, no, longer even, yeah. Now six or seven years ago, they still used AWS. And I think they are still. Right. So what's yeah. your point of view? Yeah, I think uh, it's a really tough one because in my experience, I mean, I've worked a bit in the past with AWS and I was evaluating some of the products for a platform project. And honestly, they were always ahead regarding the flexibility of the products. So if you have more complicated use cases, <laughs> somehow they have built services for everything. Um, so the product catalog is huge. Um, I think developer support is huge. Um, since they're a market leader, there are a lot of people writing blogs. Um, Stack Overflow, you will find a lot on GitHub. Um, you will find experts in the market. So it's really hard to say if it's number two or number one. Um, personally, I have way, way, way more work experience in Asia, so I would give it a number two, even though they are market leader. Um, here's just a point. I predict Asia will become market leader. Why? Since, I mean, I think they have this unique network effect that they are already having a lot of relationship with businesses and for many businesses that are now migrating to the cloud uh, they will always place Azure into the equation because you have already contracts with Microsoft uh, probably if you are using one of their services starting with Windows or Office um, they can bundle and package their products uh, in a way that it becomes really attractive and what I've been observing is um, that in the last two years, a lot of their cloud services improved, whether it's from functionality side, but also in the documentation side. And um, my bet is that uh, Azure will also become the big cloud provider. We should also not forget uh, that Microsoft is a software company, a pure software technology company, uh, since its roots, AWS is an, well started as an e-commerce platform, I, and it's still a, a big part of the business is e-commerce. And um, yeah, Google Cloud has, I mean, Google itself has mainly search as one of the key drivers of their business or roots of their businesses. So when Microsoft says they're a technology provider, um, I would bet that they will make it in the future going that far that they become also market leader. So my bet now is, I would even wrap it up from my side, uh, number two, AWS, number one, Azure. 
Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, on the Azure, Azure side, I will go with you, actually. But, um, yeah, we can't hide that we all already uh, talked, like, a lot about this topic, um, which will be the next big uh, cloud provider. Um, we, we shouldn't hide that fact. And yeah, my main point is I started to use Azure and basically d due to your uh, information and as I knew, yeah, you are hosting there and to have a person I can directly speak to if I have like, like problems or if I need to get an overview. I mean, if you are running a SaaS, you actually have some core services which, uh, which everybody basically uses, be it an application server or serverless functions or whatsoever or the uh, uh, an active directory kind of thing, like for authentication and authorization. So like a directory service. And if you are using that, I knew that I have a, a partner to speak to about that and about new products, which was for me a point to go to Azure actually. Um, and as you said, as I'm doing it out of a company context, I'm, um, yeah, we already have <clears throat> having Microsoft and uh, they are pushing, putting their own products more and more into the um, cloud space, as you were telling uh, before when you show, told, told us about Azure. So um, I think there will be a closer time into their products. And we are using those products as they are in most of the companies use the so office suite alone, you know. So um, having those integrations, I think this is kind of vital and an integral part of having your company running. I mean, the vendor login is already there with Windows and Office, basically. Um, so I chose to go on, on the Azure kind of side. And another huge big point we totally didn't mention, if you are from the European Union or especially from Germany, which is super, super curious about the DSGVO or the GDPR, as it's called on the EU level. So the... Um, D data protection rights. Um, yeah, in Germany, they totally overdo it with it. But you you have like, if you have like super um, set data that is super sensible, meaning person, personal data of, of people actually, you need to make sure that the data stays in Europe or in some cases, even though in Germany. And with Azure, you have the ability to at least have the guarantee from Microsoft to get that, or you can get a level higher and have a certain data center where you can host your data, which is uh, uh, hosted by the telecom and freshly built like two years ago in, in is it Magdeburg, I think, or near Magdeburg. So that is also a point because if you are working with highly sen sensitive data, which is partially the case for me, or maybe the case for me, I have the ability to just switch, use the same services and have that guarantee actually. So yeah, that is, that is one point. As of obviously Azure is trying to uh, have a close time into the German market actually, or the European market at all. So that is also a huge point for me to choose Azure over AWS or Google. Yeah, as they don't, I, I haven't seen that they has, have such a time into the European market, actually. I think they are, I mean, that would be also an interesting uh, uh, <clears throat> um, statistic to see how the shares in different countries are. And I think AWS and GCP are more uh, from their whole piece of the cake they got, like their 100% is like a huge bunch in the US and only a small relatively to Azure and relatively to the size of U the EU um, is, is really, Azure will be bigger, I think. So yeah, that's also a decision point for me. So yeah, Azure on place one, but <coughs> highly subjective, but with certain points you may be able to leverage and yeah that's from my side actually all right then uh yeah i think let's wrap it up um yeah i, I think we you, should yeah so i hope everyone watching this uh had a uh, has now 
a good overview about or a slight overview about what is going on. Um, I think this stream took now one hour and 15 minutes. So yeah, uh, a lot of content uh, to process. <laughs> and yeah, yeah such I'm, I mean, I've seen that our main content, so the showing of products was only 20 minutes. So I think it's fine that the core was 20 minutes and the rest was discussion mostly. So yeah, I think, yeah, to really wrap it up, our um, <clears throat> list is, an, is a little bit with subjectivity and we try to put it as objective as possible, but there are always points or preference points we need to make to get kind of a ranking. Um, so therefore I think we are as subjective, uh, as, subjective as, as we could be uh, from our standpoint and we were making it transparent why we are choosing what we are choosing. Um, and you should be able to, as I said, get your requirements together and think about the different points we are opening up and get an overview what to think about and how to rank it. But yeah, it's basically Azure, AWS, GCP, Oracle, IBM, Alibaba from one to six, basically, for the given reasons. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed our little talk and our uh, discussion afterwards. And thanks for joining in. So thanks for joining, guys. Bye. See you. Bye.